Year end list. 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 Yeah, boy, it is that time of the year once again. I survived another trip around the sun, and hopefully you did too. I can't say that I enjoyed my time here, but I'm here nonetheless. More importantly, I survived long enough to write 2,500 words on my 15 favorite tracks of 2023, which is no small feat for an idiot like myself. For any of you first time forever spinning viewers, here are the ground rules. One song per artist, and being a featured artist on a song does not exclude you from having another song on the list. That's it, those are all the rules. I also want to remind y'all these are my favorite songs, not the best songs. I don't review music, that's just not my shtick. I'm just here to share the 15 tracks that I enjoyed listening to the most in 2023. There's literally no other rhyme or reason as to how this was written. Alright, the rules are pretty simple and I hope y'all get the message, so let's dive into things. Just kidding, let's kick things off with some honorable mentions, starting with Not Yours by Buggin. I Want to Start a Religion with You by Fireworks, Seizure of Assets by Military Gun, Backseat Girl by Jane Remover, and and slogan Machine by Gum. Opening up the real list at number 15 is Our Sky Smile by Ginger Bee. This may be the weirdest tune to make it to the list, but I'll be damned if it isn't fun as hell. This fifth wave emo track runs the gamut with a wide range of dynamics, both in the instrumental performance and vocal delivery. It features that signature fifth wave chip tune that is immediately followed up by garbled vocals and nearly unrecognizable noise rock. It's a lot, and I don't necessarily think that it's mixed or produced well, but it's much more charming because of these DIY ways. More than anything, as a raw song and as a concept, Our Sky Smile is an instant home run for me. Next up, at number 14, we have Too Late by Pain of Truth featuring Trapped Under Ice. Y'all don't know this, but 2023 became the year of Trapped Under Ice for me, so when this collab dropped, I was all for it. And since that time, Too Late has only grown on me. It's the perfect mix between a Pain of Truth song and a Trapped Under Ice song, culminating in a hardcore masterclass. The riffs are huge, the vocals are even bigger, yeah, this thing kicks fucking ass. I'll be talking more about this whole LP in a couple of days, but god damn do I love Too Late. Coming in at number 13 is Wide Awake by Strange Ranger. I'm actively upset that it took me until after they broke up for me to find out about Strange Ranger. Whatever, I'm over it. But what I'm not over is just how good Wide Awake is. These swirling textures in both the instrumental and vocals are sublime, creating a shoegaze atmosphere that should be studied for years to come. Even with the heavier sounds that are typically associated with this style of music, Wide Awake feels light, airy, and dare I say, uplifting. All of these sounds are in lockstep with each other, resulting in some great grooves. Wide Awake passes the vibe check through and through, and for that alone, it deserves to be on this list. Number 12 is going to be Wedding in Drain County by Liquid Mike. Some might argue that 2023 is the year of Liquid Mike, and admittedly, I might be one of them. There were simply too many good songs to choose from on this self-titled effort that dropped earlier in the year. However, I have to choose only one, so it might as well be Wedding in Drain County, which does boast a hook that will be ringing in your ears for weeks to come. It's infectious, it's jumpy, it's fun as hell. That's all I'll say on the matter, just stay tuned for more Liquid Mike talk when I go through the albums of the year. Taking the 11 spot is first place by Chris Farron. I've been aware of Chris for quite some time, but I don't think I love any of his material as much as I love first place. Everything about the song is a blast, even with its lovelorn and regretful lyrics. The instrumental lifts you up and forces you to dance around like a fool with its thumping percussion and weird additions of horns and ascending synths. Chris kills this performance too, with exuberant swings in the catchy hook. First place is quite the peculiar cut, but it's those weird little things that really make it stand out. Moving into the top 10, we have Jake's Piano, Long Island by Zach Bryan. If you had Luke Talks About a Country Song on his year end list on your bingo card, go fuck yourself because no you didn't. Yeah, this song is fucking incredible. Zach's performance is among his all time best, as the nearly invisible instrumental allows his emotions to take center stage. That's not to say the piano isn't great or anything like that, but it certainly does take a backseat to Zach's brilliantly haunting lyrics about loss and moving on. Even without going through an experience like that, I can still feel his pain loud and clear. It may be a very long time until another country song ends up on one of my year end lists, so cherish this moment as much as you can. Then again, Zach could undoubtedly drop a new album next year that rivals this beast. Stealing the ninth position on this list is All the People by Shane. Now, this is the exact 
reason that I preface this video by explaining these are my favorite songs and not the best songs. For instance, I think there are better songs on Food for Worms, but this one personally resonates with me so much that it became my favorite of the bunch. Not to get too deep into this shit, but I really have been struggling with my mental health for quite some time. This year in particular, I just really haven't been able to find any love for myself. I mean, I feel like I actively hate myself and I can't really see any other way about it. But then I listen to this and I hear lyrics like all the people that you're gonna meet, don't you throw it all away because you can't love yourself and I feel a bit better. Don't get me wrong, I still can't hear this song without tearing up a bit, but it does help. So yeah, I do think it's a great track, but it's the intangibles that brings this tune all the way up to number nine on this list. I'm just realizing now that this next song makes it three slow sad songs in a row on this list, so yeah, it says a lot. Sorry. Number eight is Goodbye Trouble by Greg Mendez. Realistically, I could have chosen like three other songs from the self-titled LP, but Goodbye Trouble just felt like the right choice. It's minimalistic without being barren, allowing for Greg's vocals to be at the forefront of this two-fold cut. It also features some great instrumental sections and transitions, along with some bittersweet lyrics. Everything surrounding this song just feels right. I found myself listening to quite a lot of singer-songwriter material this year, and Goodbye Trouble is among the best of the best, at least to my ears. The seventh spot is going to Train to Harlem by Corinne. I'll admit, I've definitely fallen off the modern dark wave and synth punk scene in comparison to the past couple of years, but a song like Train to Harlem serves as a reminder that the scene is in good hands with bands like Corinne. Initially, this was not my favorite from the new record, but it has grown on me immensely. The lush production allows the extra textures to bounce off the instrumental like rain on a waterproof jacket. The instrumental just feels alive in a way that some of their other material doesn't. The vocals are equally as lively, making this a tune that should be blasted from the best sounding speakers that you can get your hands on. Moving on, number six on this list is The Real by Narrowhead. Everything about the instrumental on this sounds crunchy as hell in the best way possible. It's almost like they wrote a slower, more shoegazy song like the majority of their older material, but decided to speed it up a bit and turn the fuzz into crude noise. Too long didn't read, this instrumental is as solid as they come. But the vocals, they shine above all of this, being lightly sung on top of the noise to be the icing on the cake. It's like if you were to reverse how a watermelon worked and you had the sweet innards on the outside and the nasty rind on the inside. Bad analogy, I know, but it's 2am so cut me some slack. Just go put on the reel so you can belt out the lines, how good does it feel to be you, to be real, and that'll make you forget all about my shortcomings as a writer. Cracking into the top five, we have Feeble Little Horse with Freak. I feel like every time I show this to someone, they end up loving it. In a list that is full of killer hooks, this is the cream of the crop. The mixing and production approach is whack as hell, but goddamn does it work. As much as I love these grimy and grainy synths, guitar, and bass, I'm kind of glad this track is as short as it is. I think it works better this way, despite me now being on my hands and knees just begging for somebody to make more music in this exact sonic style. If you like pop music, I think you'll like this. If you like noise rock, I think you'll like this. Freak is this weird amalgamation of sounds and textures that transcend genre boundaries and categories, which is always a base thing to do. Taking the fourth spot is David by Empty Country. I don't know if any song this year has sounded better. The brooding bass, twinkling piano, and driving guitar creates a world like no other. And that's all before even mentioning the vocals, which could go down as the most passionate of the year. The character exuded here is wild, making it an instant standout on a first listen. They even managed to stuff a badass guitar solo into the the middle of the cut. All of these theatrics to pay homage to the late, great David Berman of the Silver Jews is just remarkable. It takes a lot out of me to listen to David without crying, specifically the heartfelt hook and lines, I'm scared to die, but I'm not scared of death. God bless Empty Country for writing this, and God bless David Berman for being the type of artist who would inspire this type of fervent and moving piece. Next up, at number three, we have Deleted by MS Paint featuring Military Gun. Good God, there is nothing quite like a collab track that feels like a match made in heaven. If you were to put Ian from Military Gun on literally any other song in this LP, I don't think that it would work at all. But when it comes to Deleted, this feature pushes it leaps and bounds past what it would have been without the feature. The deep synth pulses hit nearly 
nearly as hard as the drum pounds, giving this the hardcore edge that separates MS Paint from other synth punk projects. Not only does this sound crazy, but it could also be a pop hit too, from the song's catchy instrumental construction to the erupting and singable hook. Plus, we get lyrics talking about connecting with the world on more than just a surface level, which is oh so relatable in 2023. I just want to feel it, not delete it. Am I right, fellas? Coming in at number two is a song that I was slightly hesitant about putting on this list, not because it isn't good, but because the album itself doesn't come out until next year. But damn it, I Got Heaven by Mannequin Pussy is simply too good to leave off this list. This is arguably their best song, which is saying something considering this is the same band that wrote songs like Drunk 2 and Romantic amongst many other modern classics. Classics. While I think the instrumental is impeccably written, the real standout is Missy's vocal performance. This is Missy at her most dynamic, barking like a dog in some sections while laying you to sleep during the elegant hook. The lyrics themselves are gnarly too, balancing sheer and unregulated anger with appreciation and acceptance. I Got Heaven melds together the best elements of Mannequin Pussy's sound and ethos into what I find to be their crowning jewel. If this ends up on next year's list too, that's totally fine because I'll champion this tune until I can't speak anymore. And that, ladies and germs, will bring us to my favorite song of 2023. Taking that number one spot is, of course, Chosen to Deserve by Wednesday. I love this song, there's no denying that, but I also think that it's a truly perfect track. We can sit here and we can talk about perfect tracks that are usually associated when we talk about perfect tracks, and I will sit here and I will defend Chosen to Deserve every time. Stairway to Heaven? Sure. Smells Like Teen Spirit? Yeah. Purple Rain? Absolutely. But every time that I have this conversation now, I'm going to end up turning into that meme of the guy standing up in church as I say that Chosen to Deserve is a perfectly written song. And if the people I'm with don't agree with me, then I'll just smack them upside the head. Okay, maybe not like physically, but mentally, yeah, no, I'm smacking you upside the head. From the charming guitar tones and passionate vocal performance to the catchy hook and entertaining lyrics, this thing is a goddamn grand slam. Not only is it constructed to perfection, but it's also so easy to listen to. This isn't some fucking think piece or whatever with crazy time signature changes changes and off the wall production. There's no gimmick here that puts it above the rest, it's just as solid as a song has ever been, and then some. I will proudly take any heat thrown at me for putting this at number one, but I have a sneaking suspicion that not that many people are going to argue about this pick. If you're only going to listen to one song off this entire list, then please, for the love of God, make sure it's chosen to deserve. And yeah, that is it. That is going to wrap up my 15 favorite tracks of 2023. I want to thank you all for tuning in especially if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much. Please, I encourage you to go down to the comments section and let me know some of your favorite tracks from 2023. Did any of your personal picks make the list? Did they not? Let me know. Let's have a discourse, a conversation, and yeah, let's just chat music. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel for more end of year videos coming this week. I'm gonna drop this little teaser right now and let you know that I actually covered 50 of my favorite albums this year instead of 30. I've yet to film it and I must admit I am kind of overwhelmed by that daunting task, but nonetheless, we power through. But we're going to end this with the usual house cleaning stuff. Like I said, please make sure you're subscribed because not only do I have end of year videos, I also have shows like So You're Interested In, where I break down an artist's discography, many of whom were featured in this video so far, and let you know the best place to start off with them. I also have a show called Stacks of Wax, where I go through my record collection and show off some of the cool piece of wax that I own. Then there are other shows like The Variety Show and Where It's At, which are a lot of fun too. Basically, what I'm getting at here is that there is a lot more going on than just end of your videos on this channel. But let's close this video out as we always do with my reminders for you to go out and support your local record store if you were able to along with you local artists in your area and well until I see you next time happy listening.